Hey guys, I'm Nathan from Arms & Armor. Today I want to show you our Cavalier Rapier. So this is a beautiful piece. It is a replica of an original that's at Sulgrave Manor. Uh, and it's from around the year 1620 or 1630. So the Cavaliers were a faction in the English Civil War between, you know, 1640, 1650-ish. Uh, and they were supporters of King Charles I. They were mostly rural, rich guys uh, who were against uh, Parliament, who wanted essentially a, an absolute monarchy. Uh, the word cavalier originally was you know, used to denigrate them, although it comes from the Latin for essentially horsemen, right? like caballero, uh, chevalier, same thing. Uh, it means someone who's mounted, but it had additional connotations, right? Today, being cavalier means being kind of haughty and dismissive. And, you know, this probably originated from their social position. This sword, though, would have been used by either side in the Civil War if you were someone of sufficient wealth and rank. Uh, this piece is uh, a wide-bladed war rapier, I would call it. So it has the hilt of a rapier, but a wider and heavier blade that is as effective in the cut as in the thrust. It's rigid enough uh, to fight in the armor of the 17th century. Uh, you can cut down uh, from horseback uh, on your foes. When you look at the hilt of this one, it is faceted, right? So this pommel, you see the peen here, has, I don't even remember how many facets on it, 20 or something, uh, that are all hand done. Uh, a wire-wrapped spiral grip with Turk's heads. The outside rings, the fore ring and the main ring, are both octagonally faceted and blued, as are the arms. And then on the inside guard, we actually have a thumb ring on this sword, which you hold like this, which gives you additional control in the cut. Right? Most rapiers don't have a thumb ring because you're not cutting. <laughs> so this is something that exists in basket-hilted cutting swords frequently, in some of these war rapiers, and in some sabers, Polish sabers, Hungarian sabers sometimes, that were used primarily for mounted combat, also fighting on the ground, but mostly mounted. Uh, the, these bars on the inside guard are also faceted, uh, including the root here. It's hard to see because of the bluing, but it is additionally octagonal. The ricasso here allows you to place your finger comfortably up on the blade, which allows the pommel to rest against kind of the pad of your palm, and it gives you some additional leverage. This sword weighs about three pounds, right? There's a lot of metal in the hilt, and the blade is stout, uh, so it's a substantial sword, and you want to be able to have that balancing point on your hand, right? The center of gravity is about, oh, three inches out uh, from the Ricasso, so it gives you, uh, you know, it's, it's a mobile sword, uh, but it gives you an authoritative cut, despite the really acute profile taper in this sword. It goes from 1.7 inches wide down to a fine point in a stiff diamond section that made this blade strong enough you know, to not bend or break routinely uh, in war rather than as a civilian you know, weapon, which many rapiers were. So this piece uh, check it out on our website. We have it temporarily unavailable to order, mostly just because we're trying to catch up on all of our rapier orders. This will become available again, but if you're interested in one, you can drop us an email. We can put you on essentially the wait list for when we decide to make these uh, available again. Uh, we usually do them blued. They don't have to be, right? They can be bright. Uh, heck, you can have it gold-plated if you want. Uh, 
That would be super fancy. King Charles would be proud of you if you did that. Check it out. Thank you.